All right, today I'm going to walk you through how I made the Captain America shield throw effect 100% in DaVinci Resolve. All right, so today's video is going to be a little bit different than some of my previous ones because instead of recreating the effect from scratch while step-by-step -step showing you how to do it, I'm going to walk you through my original project just so that we can save time. It'll go way faster, otherwise we'd be here for hours, but it'll be all the same information, just way faster. All right, so the first thing I did was I found this picture of the shield on, I think it was Google, and then I merged it over this background so that it would be in 1920 by 1080. I did notice it has this, let's see, pull this down. It has this reflection here, this big highlight, which would be a problem making this a 3D thing because it wouldn't react to the lights. Um, so I did this transform, take it out. If I take out this polygon right here. So I just rotated the whole shield, just lining up the star. And then I put this polygon so that the only thing that was transforming was this area. So I took out that highlight. So I plugged that into a create bump map, had the height scale very low, and that gave me this, which gave me good texture for the thing. So I plugged that into an actual bump map. It's really hard to see it. You can kind of see it faintly right here, these lines. You see the star? No, not really. So I plugged that into the bump map of a Cook Torrance, and then I put the original color into the diffuse color. And that gave me this. So I left everything as it was. I did bring down the roughness so that you have a little reflection right there. So what I did to make the shield, I used a, oh, hello. I used a sphere. So this is just a normal sphere or a shape 3D. Put it on a sphere, um, up the subdivisions, then I had the lighting, turn on lighting here, and that gave me the shield all in 3D. It's curved and has the shape. The problem with it is if I turn it around, it's just the original, it's just the shield on the other side. So to cover that up, I found a picture of the back. Using an ellipse, I cut out this white background, and then again merged it over the same background so it would be the same size. And so I took this shape 3D, which is a little bit thinner than the other one, so it wasn't overlapping. I just plugged the replace material straight into that without doing anything, because this one doesn't have to be as detailed as the front, because you're not going to be calling focus to this. It's not going to be seen as much. It's just to cover up the back of this one. So I merged those together, and now I have a full 3D shield made for free in DaVinci without using any exterior 3D model. So then I have my then throw in it and looking like an idiot basically. <laughs> so for this first little bit when I'm just holding the shield statically, I tracked my hand. I was able to track that for a good bit up until I start throwing it. On the transform 3D, I was able to get away with keyframing the like every five frames the rotation and a little bit of the translation but not a lot and then you can see right here I didn't have the tracker once the tracker stopped I had to go hand by hand for throwing it and then I just kind of went added keyframes of it bouncing off places and then here again once I caught it I couldn't get a track there so I just did it by hand but it wasn't long then here I just added a directional light and an ambient light, obviously a camera, and then all that went into the render 3D. So I have it set to OpenGL render, and I made sure that I clicked vector, so it's exporting vector, and I made sure the depth is float 16 or 32. Um, it has to be one of those, and I will explain later why. 
So this is where I composited it. So here the transform is where I connected it to the tracker. I right clicked and modified with the tracker. But the problem is straight off, it brings the center of the image, which is over here to where the tracker was. So the shield's all the way down here. So to compensate for that, I have this transform here, which brought it back into place. So the reason that I needed vector before is this tool, which may be your new best friend in compositing if you ever work in 3D. It's the Vector Motion Blur. So on the Render 3D, it has an option for motion blur, but it doesn't look great. It takes forever to render, and it really just looks choppy. Like you have to crank it up to like 10 or 15 for it to look decent, and it just takes forever to render. But if you have it on the OpenGL and bring vector, this vector motion blur, will calculate where it is, the vector of where it is in 3D space. I think, I'm not 100% sure how it works. All right, so if I turn the vector motion blur on, look at the difference. And it does that for every frame of the thing. So the motion blur is a huge part of selling really any CG thing. So next, I added a color corrector and boosted the contrast and brought down the saturation just to make it match my footage. I also have a directional blur because straight out where the vector with the vector motion blur, I have it coming in really fast, it'll load, coming in really fast one frame, and then the next frame, there's no motion blur at all. So I have this directional blur to kind of ease it in a little bit more. And then with really any CG thing, I added a blur. Just it's a really small blur. Then I added a sharpen, which adds this kind of like halo around the edges kind of thing, if you can see there, which my footage has. Yeah, especially like right here around this frame, you can see the darker parts have this kind of halo around it. And that's what the sharpen recreates my thing. And then I added JPEG damage to make it look worse for my footage and it adds a kind of grain to it. So here I added a shadow and these final things where the shield would be blocking light for me. I have a color corrector darkening it to add a shadow. It makes a lot of difference. So what that is, is I have the shield right here, and then I put that into a bitmap node. I soft edge it a little bit, then offset it a little bit. And so that right here, it's just the shape of the thing. And this part over here would be covered by the shield, so I wasn't worried too much about that. But in these final frames, it starts to go into the wall. So what I did is I did a luma key on my original footage. Just on this wall, I was able to track my shoulder so that these masks would be able to stay with it. There's one shot, Let's see if I can find it. There's one shot where the shield should be covered by my hand, but it's not. So I duplicated my footage and then just masked out my hand for those frames. It, it's, it's not a very detailed mask. See, just I just masked what I had to, and then merged that on top of the footage. So there, my hand is covering up the shield like it would in real life. Like, that's it. I connected it up to the media out, and that's it. It renders surprisingly fast. I thought this was going to take a long time and my computer would be really sluggish, but it renders very fast. And that's how I made the Captain America shield throw effect in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. If you enjoyed this and want to see more VFX tutorials for DaVinci Resolve, be sure to subscribe. If there is an effect you would like me to do a tutorial for, please leave a comment below and I will try to do it. Alright, I'm out. Oh.